Make the next sound. Here we have a tube of a certain length. And if we set up a standing wave inside it, perhaps there's a column of air that's vibrating, the bottom end has a node because that's where it's fixed in position. At the very top, what we have is an anti-node. The first standing wave that fits into here must go from a node to an anti-node. Now if the distance from a node to a node is half a wavelength, then the distance from a node to an anti-node must be equal to a quarter of the wavelength. And therefore we start at uh, the node at the bottom end and we move up to the anti-node at the top. And it looks a bit like that. Um, if we then think about the same column, or the same length column, and we have various other standing waves that we can set up, this time we still have a node at the bottom and an anti-node at the very top, but there must be another way to get an anti-node and a node within this. And if we think about this, well, from a node to a node is a quarter of a wavelength, uh, sorry, a half a wavelength, then a node to an, the next anti-node is equal to uh, three quarters of a wavelength. And if I draw this in, Uh, and this is equal to three quarters of the wavelength of this. If we then consider the same tube again with the next standing wave that we can fit into it. So again, we have a, a node to a node is half a wavelength. So that means the total length of this is going to be equal to uh, five lambda over four, because it's one and a quarter uh, full waves. And uh, what we can do then is we can start to um, investigate standing waves in an open tube in many ways. Because this is the first standing wave that we set up, this is our fundamental. And linked to this, we also have our second harmonic and also our third. Now this is just like what we have where we have maybe a string fixed at both ends, but here the wavelength is gonna be a different multiple of the total length of that tube. 